This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. So apparently what some of you folks come to this channel for are kind of legato tips. It's become one of the things that I get asked about most often maybe and also one of the things that I talk about most often. Now um, I wanted to do sort of a, a fundamentals kind of lesson on this in case people are kind of new to the idea of legato or are wanting to, to get a bit more of a handle on it. Um, I'll put the tabs and kind of worksheet and the backing track for this up on Patreon if you want to support in that way. You can join that for just £2 a month and get access to everything on there. Chord melodies, tabs and backing tracks and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, hopefully this is useful for you. If you wanted to leave a comment below to help the video do a little bit better on YouTube, feel free to do so and like and all that sort of stuff. And if you want more of these lessons, there's a uh, licks and lessons playlist which you could check out. I'm also using a Holdsworth lead kind of preset here because obviously I think the best legato player ever was Alan Holdsworth. Um, this is just a, a preset that I kind of tweaked the other day and I thought it sounded pretty good for this sort of thing. Um, so let's just jump into this. Uh, one reason I think that probably makes as much sense as anything to learn kind of legato stuff if you're interested in playing fast, I think legato is probably one of the more efficient, smoother um, and potentially easier ways to, to play the guitar quite fast. Now one of the things that I hear or used to hear quite a lot was about playing or practicing legato with a clean tone. I would suggest that's not a great idea. Um, part of the reason being that I think we play differently when we play with a clean tone and another thing is that you don't notice so much if you've got kind of other extraneous noise going on if you're playing with a clean tone. So I suggest just practice with the tone that you actually use. Um, and for me, 
you know, when I first got into this sort of stuff, it was Joe Satriani, Steve Vai, these kind of folks. And, you know, you're playing with quite a lot of gain. And that is part of the momentum, really, of, of what makes this legato stuff work. So, in terms of kind of hand positioning, we're wanting to try as much as possible. Now, it's not going to be super easy to start off with, to try and keep this left hand pretty relaxed and go for a, a somewhat neutral position. Thumb up here is not going to be the way. You kind of want your thumb somewhat in the middle of the neck, it would be my suggestion. And uh, for me, this hand here is taking care of some of the muting. Um, but if you're really accurate with this hand here, then you don't have to worry about that too much. So first kind of tips, I think the real key to legato, if you're new to this, is really three note per string. And I can remember when I was about 14, I had this uh, grade eight guitar book and it showed all of the positions of the major scale, but it called them modes. So you've got like Ionian. <laughs> You had Dorian, you had Phrygian, you had Lydian, you had Mixolydian, you had Aeolian, and you had Locrian. Okay, all of that is G major, and that's how I really think of it. But I, I think that what we really need to do when we're trying to build up speed with this legato is keep things really simple. And although this is not, I think, the end goal, I know for years I spent quite a lot of time just playing with a, a kind of a, a backing track, a drum machine, or a metronome, and trying to get this... <laughs> Kind of as smooth as possible so what we're doing we pick once on the string and then every note that follows will be hammered on and a thing to aim for with this hand i think this was a tom quail tip that i heard is instead of you know thinking about loads of pressure you don't necessarily need to have a ton of pressure so practice kind of being as light as possible and noticing how what the threshold is between having the note kind of sound or not it's generally going to be lighter than you think you don't need to be totally slamming everything and the thing to focus on with this hand is trying to make the, the a similar spot of the tip of your finger hit each time and try and be accurate in that way so that you're kind of hitting with the same spot in the tip of your finger. Uh, in terms of what's happening, we're kind of arching our fingers round and we kind of want to hit with the same spot each time. Okay, right, and uh, maybe try not to pull your fingers too far off of the fretboard as well. Um, it's not this sort of thing. We want to try over time to keep it a bit more efficient and smaller movements so that we can do this thing quicker. Naturally, if you've got kind of a big flap going on, um, then you're going to find that a little bit more difficult. The thing that is really, I think most folks find the hammering on part. A bit easier. So what I would do to start off with is maybe start with that and try and build up the speed. Um, count about how many notes you have. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Kind of got complicated there but i'm going to finish the line there so do four notes per beat and practice that in kind of every position so that's just our ascent keep this right hand a bit softer so you don't want 
That's why I'm kind of encouraging you to practice this in even notes so that the, the string change really we need to kind of decouple this from the idea of being the start of any subdivi subdivision. One, two, three, four, one. Right, and then we want to come to this idea of the pull-off. Now, for me, when I was first starting off, the pull-off was more difficult than the hammer-on. Um, and I think the, the tendency is to kind of try and uh, sort of over, kind of pick the first note, and then we kind of think about momentum. Um, what I think going forward, I would encourage people to think about is instead of this pull-off kind of thing, you want to consider maybe a sort of a little bit like plucking as you're going down and uh, I didn't used to really be able to do this stuff slowly very well at all I used to be one of these people that could sort of do it fast but not so much controlled so if you just think about it instead of being an off motion slightly to the side you could also consider kind of doing an all hammer-on approach That's quite tricky, um, but I think in a way, together with the idea of that slight pull to the side and a hammer on, you can get quite a, a, a solid kind of legato feel for that. So try then going up your scale. try this in each position and in every key and this is the kind of tedious um, legwork that I think most of the good legato players that you might have seen will have gone through at some stage for me I spent hours as I say between the age of about 14 and 16 uh, you know just after school thinking how fast can I get this um, and I think that's something that we don't talk about so much is that probably a lot of this development happens when we're younger and I think without doing this kind of raw speed stuff I don't know if we ever really get there um, certainly for me I can remember clearly you know where I was just concerned with doing these sorts of things as fast as I could um, these days I don't practice that stuff so much but for sure it was part of what was going on to start with so I think that's a really good way as well if you want to to, to kind of get a bit more sense and control like this practice it with a backing but maybe as you go in each position maybe you consider trying to think about each note that is passing and maybe say right each time that I play a C I'm going to try and think C in my head or say it C sounds like an Italian guy, doesn't it? Practicing legato. Um, or, you know, try that in each of the positions. C. 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 I just screwed that up. C. 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 And you could kind of just think about, as well as doing this kind of muscle memory... technique exercise also be thinking about how you're developing your fretboard knowledge by you know specifically trying to actually visualize when you're hitting you know whether it's the fourth the fifth uh, here's the fifth then so d
you're not just doing kind of raw technique exercise, you're hopefully also, because you're doing it with a backing track, trying to improve your timing, improve your control. And notice when you're hitting certain intervals. Um, okay, so that's kind of, I think, really the, a, a fundamental stage one. Um, and it might take, you know, months of this kind of stuff. And practice this standing up as well, as I think is a really key thing that some of us forget to do and practice in every key. I think two important points there, um, and maybe practice at different tempos as well. You notice that if you play with different tempos, certain things become available. You know, if it's really fast, you might only be able to do. A certain thing, but if it's kind of a, a slower tempo, you might be able to do triplets. and try and go between triplets, sixteenth notes and sextuplets with whatever you're playing. That's kind of what I think is worth practicing in that regard. Um, then once you've got this idea here, um, so you're like maybe seeing the scale starting to appear over the neck a bit more and these patterns, you're not really thinking about them anymore. They become muscle memory. That's very much where it's at for me. I'm just seeing G major and at wherever I am on the neck, G major sort of appears um, as a result of doing tons of this kind of work and practice. Then I think you want to start to think about patterns. And so a few things that I like to, to think about is things that kind of neatly start and end. So if I'm playing in four, four, one, two, three. Etc. because that's going to mean that I'm starting on beat one and ending on beat one. If I was playing six tuplets, it might be like that sort of thing. One, two, So there's kind of two patterns. Another one that I kind of was thinking about, um, which I think this is sort of inspired from a Joe Satriani thing, is blending slides. that so we're starting on the third fret with our middle finger go up down and then slide up up down slide do that you know wherever you're starting your pattern or up here start to mix these ideas up a bit so that's kind of a pattern that I, I like the idea of there another thing I really like so if we've got this six tuplet idea go up two strings up again really 
useful stuff. <laughs> practice these little ideas so that the, the basic part of that legato pattern there that's useful is that we're going up and then coming down to the string beneath try and put those sorts of things together. One other one that I really love to use is this kind of idea. So we go one, two, three. So we go up three on the first string. And on the next string we go skip, back down, middle note. So what you could do, you know, once you've got this idea of like the sort of rails of the scales. Is you can, you know, put on a backing track and practice this kind of idea. And again. And again. Again. You know, and you're putting together patterns within the scale, and that really is when you're starting to cook on this legato stuff. It's then a case of trying to improvise ideas or, you know, write ideas around some of these concepts and patterns that are, are flexible. And certainly, I think you start to get to a stage you can hopefully start to string together. <laughs> these ideas that it doesn't necessarily always have to be super fast but starting to kind of do this stream of consciousness where you're joining up lots of different ideas you know this is how other instruments practice scales as well by the way this isn't just guitar this is you know people talk about you know this guitar player sounds like he's just playing scales or whatever if you look at a flute exercise book piano basically how you get technique right um but yeah try then to start doing pattern based stuff <laughs> Descending in fours there. Or you can do kind of more interesting interval stuff. And you're starting to use these legato techniques to do things that are uh, maybe a little bit more interesting and sound a bit different. And, you know, once you get this kind of idea about what's underneath the technique and, you know... ..kind of the, the fundamentals of how to play it, I think then you could come on to you know, actually learning specific legato licks or writing your own if you uh, join my Patreon where most kind of Mondays I'm breaking down some sort of lick that could be useful. Um, you know, you might consider whether three, three note per string pentatonics might be... <laughs> ..the sort of thing that you might find interesting. 
but it's all the same kind of underneath pattern based stuff that's going on anytime you see someone playing something really fast it's probably either pattern based or it's something that's been written and then they've built it up to speed over hours and hours and hours probably that's mostly the case uh, you, even like the best players in the world like Alan Holdsworth um, you find them repeating kind of pattern based stuff and having kind of uh, you wouldn't necessarily call them licks so much as kind of parts of their own voice that they repeat certainly for me this <laughs> is kind of common for me and uh, things like that sort of thing or this kind of thing I've got my own sort of um, kind of legato character which is you know appeared after years of trying to practice this stuff but I think underneath it all for most of the kind of really good legato players out there this three note per string stuff so i've shown you everything i've shown you today has been in the key of g um but of course you'd want to practice this stuff in every key really and i spent years doing that as well you sort of just put to put a backing track on in whatever key and figure out how to play that scale all over the neck um it's a really good way i think as well to start learning the scales particularly if you start to do that thing where you're starting to be more aware of you know maybe where the third is third. as well as I think is a, a good thing so fundamentals keep it relaxed maybe your thumb in a fairly neutral position um, not too much hand pressure uh, take it easy as you will start to get used to this a light touch is generally going to be better and uh, when you're pulling off a sideways movement those are some of the legato fundamentals that I would encourage you to to try I hope that was useful for, for a few of you hopefully um, feel free to share this with any of your guitar playing friends if you think they might benefit from this as well but I think that was an important part of my legato journey that I wanted to share because there were many years where this very kind of boring non-creative scale based stuff which I think is really the fundamental behind um, being able to do this with any great fluency, I think probably there's a lot of this kind of legwork that needs to go in. And from there, it can kind of grow its own momentum and become a thing that you start to be creative in your own way with. And I think legato, as I said in the start, is probably one of the, the easier of the kind of shred techniques to get down. I think it probably sounds really good in my opinion uh, and is particularly suited to improvisation. I love legato, um, and hopefully, if you're on the channel, you're not too fed up of it yet. But um, those are some of the the things that I would practice if I was encouraging you to go down the same kind of pathway of legato playing as me. Um, so I'll put together the worksheet for you guys on Patreon, uh, so you can kind of follow along with this video if you like. Um, if you've got questions about this sort of stuff, leave them in the comments. And I'll try and get to those if I can find some time. Um, but leaving a comment in general will help this video to find a wider audience, uh, hopefully. Um, I'll catch you in another video soon. Cheers.